we're in touch with filmmaking societies, we're in touch with all these grassroots communities, basically, that we can market our film towards. And to have a theatrical release, we are saying we don't necessarily need the cinemas to do that. And therefore, we're going to have a theatrical release through churches and through community centres and get those communities that are interested in the film really excited by it, by getting them involved, offering them partnerships, offering them an opportunity to fundraise for their their centre, as well as for us to earn some money. However, we have shown it to cinema film bookers, and we're very lucky that it's been picked up by some of them. But in every case, we've said to them, we're doing it this other way, an alternative route as well. So we're trying to work the traditional system and adapt it, as well as work a new system in the community mm. centres for the distribution. Are there, are there any areas of the traditional that you feel, and Tracy as well, that you feel you can't get to the sales agent you used to be beneficial for? I personally haven't experienced it. In terms of the cinemas, mm. we, as a new distribution company, a lot of them, I admit, perhaps don't necessarily want to know initially. However, you, you talk to them, you phone them, you send them emails. You just constantly work at the relationship with them until you get to a point where they, they want to talk to you and they want to see your film. And through doing that and hosting screenings where we've got community organisations coming in and that are really excited by the film and inviting exhibitors along as well, they feel that excitement and feel that the film has an audience. And so we heard at the end of last week that View Cinemas want to show it. That's great. Which is fantastic for, the, for a piece of world cinema that's subtitled, for example. And, but we've already said to them, that's great, and we want to show it in your cinemas. However, we're still going to show it in churches. We're still going to show it in independent cinemas. And we're still going to do it our way as well. So mm -hmm. in terms of barriers, I think if you work at them hard enough and build up relationships with people, you can overcome them. Yeah. And Marie, do you have a comment off that, just um, from well, working for soda? Um, well, from a social yeah. I can completely understand as you're saying that you yeah. need that relationship with ex exhibition spaces because I don't know how many people are aware with Four Right Monsters and the problem is that they end up mm. as well when they try to contact exhibitors without having a distributor attached. And it's interesting as well that you say that you're going to go on a, with, a, with a look to distribute other films. And so... There is a definite need, I think, at the, at, oh, with the current model to have that relationship with the exhibitors because if you're a filmmaker, an independent filmmaker, how good are you at marketing your film and going to these exhibition spaces? Because just because you can make fantastic films doesn't necessarily mean that you're great at marketing and vice versa, exactly. exactly. But um, So I think that still current with the existing model, there's still definitely a need to be able to build up those relationships. <coughs> It's, it's also, it feels like a complete waste to have these amazing filmmakers. I mean, not saying that you specifically can see why it's good that your company is doing that, but for, say, like, Borrow Monsters mm -hmm. and other people that have looked to self-distribute films or filmmakers that have looked to self-distributors, they do hit those problems and they spend an awful, awful lot of time on one film, plugging it into cinemas, getting, building those relationships up. And once you've done that with one film, you can't necessarily then, I don't know whether people are going to have the energy to reproduce that with a second and third feature mm -hmm. and have to constantly go through that sort of very um, testing relationship, but that's why it can be say Which is so good to hear because it, that, that, that isn't what you'll hear every sales agent in the UK saying. It's very, very refreshing to hear it from you. And Tracy, well, you were talking about time upstairs and you had well, the I mean, same I, issues. Well, I mean, I agree with you. I mean, I, I, I think that the process of distributing your film is enormously time consuming. I mean, essentially, you've spent 18 months getting this film out and about. It was in, what, in 2006 it was launched. It did the festival circuit in 2006, yeah. and then nothing really happened on it right. until <coughs> October this year, essentially. Beginning of October, end of September, they then decided to set up this distribution company, and since then we've been full driving time. it full-time. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that is the issue, because if you're a filmmaker or a producer, I mean, you can choose to spend a year and a half, you know, even if you're not self-distributing, I think, in a way, I think there's a blur on a lot of that stuff, because essentially... You know, I've got distributors, but I'm doing a lot to market my film because I know that my film is a priority for me, but it's not a priority for my distributor all the time. So, in a way, you're doing both things, you know. And my distributor, he, um, you probably know Tom, Tom Abel Piccadillo, he does lots of, you know, world independent blah 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 films. He says getting films into the cinema now is a complete nightmare. 
you know, well, it's, 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 as we were saying before, it's the exhibition spaces. They're showing fewer. There's more. They're all commercial. commercial. They're both more and more commercial. Exactly. And it's, it, I mean, I'm looking at the Lon looking at London and how that's going with them, especially. I mean, not to pick cinemas out, but when you look at London, say places like the Curzon Cinemas, the fact that at their current lineup, they're going to be show, well, they show Pirates of the Caribbean on date, mm -hmm. and it's just films like that when you just think you can't imagine five years ago looking at that, looking at these cinemas in London. And a lot of the audience as well, and then showing these mainstream mm -hmm. releases, and it's becoming harder and harder for independents and world cinemas to actually get filmed into exhibition spaces. Which is why, I guess, with online, there's definitely methods and um, there's definitely ways. That the thing, the thing about the new technology <coughs> is that it does give you an ability to show. The problem is getting your audience, you know, that because there's just so many films out there. So you know, you have a constituency that you're aiming at. You know, theoretically. My film has a gay hero in it. Yeah, I showed it to an audience in Buckingham, a film society in Buckingham on Friday, and they were all 60 year olds, and none of them were gay, and they loved the film, you know. And they were fascinated by the whole issue about surveillance and what does it mean and what society coming to, and all this stuff. And they were, in fact, one of the most enthusiastic audiences I've had. So, in a way, I could be cutting my own nose off to spite my face by saying, oh, gay people will find it because they like gay films and, you know, so on and so forth. But actually, probably I should be going to the Solna Club or something. You know, they seem to be more interested. So um, I think it's really difficult to find, you know, to just for people to know it's out there. You're, 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 so far, the conversation is very much about marketing or distributing the film in this country. Um, the internet is very much about a global market. Um, as far as the physical distribution of films, actually getting films into cinemas, are you finding, is that I wouldn't have thought the problem is necessarily the same in other countries? Other European countries, for instance. I mean, in Australia, I know in Australia, in Melbourne, I, I lived there for 15 years, and the year that I left Melbourne to return to this country, they don't, they, they just opened a multiplex cinema, the latest of many multiplex cinemas in, in Melbourne, devoted exclusively to world cinema. So if that's representative in any way at all of what's going on in other countries, then the, the problem surely isn't as bad. And, well, I think that it's like all these things in the sense that, you know, uh, I know something about England because I live here. I can employ people to sit next to me and I can get them to do various things. But once I start trying to deal with Australia and Germany and France and America, I mean, my task is sort of multiplied by an extraordinary amount, which isn't to say I wouldn't do it. And of course, we all do the festival circuit as a way of trying to find people that want to take on your films in those territories. Um, all I'm saying is, is that if you are low budget, you have limited resources and limited money, and your key, your first, as you would know, the first thing you want to do is get your home territory sorted, basically. You but isn't that where the internet comes in, though? Isn't that the internet sort of uh, about not being so concerned with the home territory? In fact, regarding the world. Sure, but you've still got, people still got to find it, so I've still got to get to people in Australia somehow. I've got to email them, I've got to get film clubs going, I've got to, you know, I've got all the same tasks to do in Australia, France, Germany, America and everywhere else as I have in the UK. That's all I'm saying, that that's why we seek. I personally am not a distributor, I'm a producer and that's why I seek distributors in territories to help me use the various ways, whatever they may be. If it's internet, that's marvellous. If it's cinema, that's marvellous. Because I mean, if you, when you look at the territories, it's just so, it is very odd sometimes when you look at the Australian sort of distribution methods and how films perhaps grow with it. But when you look at America, the way that films perhaps grow sort of from one release in one place and then they grow through word of mouth, and that used to be great because that used to happen with films. You could release a film on one print or two prints, it would build word of mouth, cinemas would then show it. But nowadays they want to see immediate returns on that. But I think an interesting model is definitely the IFC in America, which um, they actually do sort of day-in-day -day releases with their films theatrically as well as to download. And I mean, I don't know how many people are aware of them. what they do is they take World Cinema and they release that online. And that's something that, for me personally, I'd love to be able to do that with my distribution company. So great, I want to release this film in the cinema. I also want to release it at as great quality as I can online to people. So no matter where you are, all these theatres that won't show or can't show for whatever reasons, then can. But the problem is, is then in the UK at the moment, the exhibitors sit back and say, oh, well, hang on a minute, we're, we're now competing with another market. Why is anyone going to want to watch it from us when they can watch it on their computer at home and they can do this at home? But I mean, just to bring back to your point, it's just like, I can see how these models work in other countries. But I think at the moment with the UK, we're likely losing that. And I agree with what you were saying before about 
And once you conquer the battle of getting your film out there, it's then profiling in those countries. Who's then going to champion your film? Who's then going to market it through these niche methods? And, but I think there's definitely something. There are people out there that are setting up companies and methods of distribution globally and sort of consolidating copyright to try and get films out on a global level because it does feel absurd at the moment to say, right, we can reach everybody, we just can't, in, as I said, because of copyright issues and because of... Um, well, also, I mean, we're dissecting the territories because that's, you know, that we're trying to parcel up the territories. So, in a way, I don't want to get loads of people to buy it in Australia right now because what I'm hoping is I'm going to find a partner in Australia who's going to know more about that local market than I do and is going to be able to exploit it in the best possible way because I don't know the Australian broadcasters. I mean, I could phone them up, I could ask them to go and see it when it's on in Sydney and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, I won't necessarily be there. And I think that that... You know, at the end of the day, you have to really be like a you know dog after a bone. Well, so what you're, what you're, if I understand you correctly, what you're wanting to, what you're talking about 